Guys, I've had the privilege of hosting him on stage and on various online formats. Uh, this is the first time I get a one-on-one -on -one with him, so I'm so excited to talk a little bit more about uh, some of his other projects that don't make some other names. So that being said, he is an actor whose body of work includes and makes some noise if I say something you like. Chuck! Boo! Partners! Oh, yeah! <laughs> Dilla Dog! Dilla Mike! Woo! Scott Pilgrim vs. The World! Yeah! And various DC comic roles as the Atom, yeah. and Shazam, from <laughs> television and video games. Today he joins us to discuss this amazing career. Please welcome back Brandon Ralph. Unconsciously, 
and it's due to my, my my parents who were not perfect parents, but they did a lot of amazing things in my community. Um, and uh, and so when I came to when I went to New York then uh, to IMTA, which was this showcase, I so I met my first manager, and I had meetings with modeling modeling agents and talent agents. And so then the uh, so my first manager, Jeff Maroney, said. You know, you're you're pretty green, which means I didn't know what I was doing, but I had a good look, <laughs> and I was a nice kid, so he thought he'd give me a chance. He was a young, young, he was only a couple years older than I was, <laughs> but he was a manager, and he said, you know, if there's ever a Superman movie, I'm uh, definitely gonna get you in on that audition. I was like, all right, cool, because he said, oh, you look like Christian Reeve. Has anybody ever told you that? I was like, no. It was the first time I remember ever something like that, and then I went, you know, so. I had a super small bill. I didn't get small, but I had a call back. And so Tom Welling booked small bill, and I booked a soap opera. And I went to New York City, and Tom was like everywhere on every billboard. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Like, that painted shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. The painted red says. And I was like, man. Um, but no, I like Tom. Uh, and I think it's a funny story. Uh, so I did a soap opera for a year. Uh, Got fired from that. Came back to <laughs> uh, I came back to Los Angeles. Uh, didn't work as an actor for about a year. Uh, got a couple of odd jobs as a bartender and a, a guy packing boxes at a, a wholesale wholesale direct online website. It was a uh, kind kind gentleman who had been in the business. And he he allowed me to go on auditions, a few auditions that I had or might have or hope to have in that time period, and uh, then ended up. Through um, an old, an old uh, contact and an old manager, uh, he became an agent and had me come in. And I was like, "Yeah, I'll come in. I hope nobody else is coming." So uh, that was wonderful. I met my manager through them, and um, about six months after that is when Superman started happening again, or started happening for the first time. Yeah. Um, and I got my back on my feet. And then there's more to the story too. But, you know. <laughs> That's what I did. Um, and and, and, and I, I will always say this. Um, it's a great movie. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> there, was, there wasn't enough belief, I think, in the subject matter that this was something that was worthwhile, that um, it was discredited and looked at as silly stories and make-believe and all those weird sci-fi geeks, you know, which they were making money off. But either they were those geeks themselves, but couldn't be okay and weird like me. Um, so then, you know, they just didn't have the love and appreciation to treat the characters well. Thankfully, Superman Returns was a high quality uh, product of, of, uh, that stands out in my mind amongst a couple other things. I, I trust that James Gunn, I think that he's going to, we're going to, it's going to be sailing high. I, I, I'm intrigued. I, 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 I'm yeah. intrigued as we all are. And um, I do find it interesting though, yeah, the, the powers that be, and, and if you look at the history of, of that era, you notice that when Marvel was announcing, which I read this way too, the consensus at Warner Brothers was, why would we put all of our main characters in one movie? That's not going to make a hundred million. We can put this way too. And then Avengers came out. And then Avengers made up billions. <laughs> and then if you look at the time deal, you realize then, uh, literally three days later, Time Warner announces, oh, we're going to do Superman and Batman and then Justice League and a Cyborg and everything else too. We're still waiting on a Cyborg movie. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is that, yeah, that, that the entertainment business is reactive, mm -hmm. and, um, and unfortunately, it just didn't catch it. 
it's just, you know, it's a belief. You gotta believe, you gotta, you gotta believe in the possibility of these things. Uh, superheroes, that's, it's in the name. It's all suspending your belief. And thankfully, we have the creative team and, and, and the executive team behind Marvel who's, who showed us how to do it. I, I love DC. I, this is not a good knock against any, it's just not having enough of that belief, I think. And then, but that's a challenging thing to do. But I think I'm glad that we have that model and, and, and that we can just go, oh, they are doing it right and it's okay to do it. To learn and <laughs> to do it right, you have to keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Um, that's just insane. And uh, and of course, you've done some fantastic work. Uh, Dylan, Dog. Oh, yeah. How did that come to Dylan Dog? Well, that came about um, in an interesting way. Um, it was a different director at the time, um, and I met with 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 him and had a nice meeting. And I guess it, it, they've been trying to get it made for a little while, a U.S. version of it. And uh, I think Sam Huntington actually met with the director before I did about Dylan. And he would have been fantastic, Dylan, also. Um, probably more funny than mine would have been. He's a good one. He's more funny than I am. But uh, I, I, I like me. Dylan. Dylan. That honor is just about it. But then that, that fell apart. But. Uh, Kevin Real came on, and I don't remember exactly why. Maybe because he, he was also writing, or had to be able to write a part of it. But thankfully, he was great. And, and, um, and then I brought Gil Adler to the project. Believe me, I'm getting old here. But I think uh, because Gil was a producer of some returns, and, uh, and I thought he'd be great uh, to helm, helm, helm the ship. And then I'd have Sam. It was kind of like a no-brainer from the beginning. And Marcus was kind of then molded around Sam and his and his strengths uh, to a degree um, by Kevin. And we had a lot of fun, man. It was a great, you know, the, the, that kind of movie suffered from not having the budget that it needed. And so then we couldn't film in New York City. We had to film in New Orleans. And then we couldn't have the car we wanted. We did all these things, and things kept falling away. But the heart did our best to keep um, true to partnership aspect and, and Dylan's, you know, aloofness, but sarcasm, but this and that, which, uh, you know, I as an actor, I as an actor look back and go, well, I could do that better now. Um, but it was a wonderful, fun experience, and that's the kind of, that's the kind of um, horror movie I like. Like, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not big into horror genre, uh, except for a horror comedy, and when it can tell a really good story, but not <laughs> no, no, that, that's absolutely fair. That's fair. I think uh, one of our discussions, you, uh, you said you're a big fantasy fan, aren't you? I am, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sure you've had them before, but uh, do you think you get a thrill every time on Lord of the Rings? Uh, you see a Lord of the Rings guest at all the shows? Oh, it's cool, yeah. I, mean, I haven't met uh, everyone involved in that project yet. I've known Sean, um, Sean Aspen for a while, um, from various other conventions, and yeah. because he's uh, a big part of the SAG. As one of our board members, and, uh, and he he's trying to drag me into the fray. Also, I'm very very great, great, grateful. I've learned a lot. Uh, I come from a family of you know, strong union members and supporters and leaders, so um, I fully believe in uh, in that. He's been a great guy. And, uh, and, ha and as a member of Equity, we yeah. support our SAG uh, Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, it's not it's not a lie to say that we're part of the. America, great, is having, having partnerships and, and the ability to stand up against the people who um, all they, you know, they just want the money. They want to have their own life too, but they want to have all the million dollar bonuses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and yeah, I, mean, I understand that, but I don't like, don't get it. But I do understand it, and I kind of get it, but I don't. <laughs> I mean, as soon as I get it, Oh, I get it. No. So then why? <laughs> um, okay, anyway, back to this. But, uh, well, the, the, the fancy course that uh, yes. I sort of, I know, I Oh, Lord of the Rings. And, and, and Elijah, <laughs> I met very briefly a couple times. But I have to say uh, hello again because we're both from Iowa. So I've said his name a lot. And been like, I was cool, right? Elijah Wood. <laughs> 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 
because, uh, because since the film kind of lacks any uh, specific uh, classification, I consider Scott Pilgrim to be a fantasy film. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, most comics, you know, or some other uh, uh, graphic novel or what have you, is, is all that sci fi, it's all magical world, right? So well, like, yeah, it's, it's, a fantasy, it's, it's, it's a fantasy, it's a role, it's, it's, it's ray guns, it's, uh, it's, it's fiction. If it's, it's a fiction, it's fiction. It's, 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 yeah. it's absolutely. It's but, uh, but again, you have a, a, a very scene stealing, memorable part of the uh, yeah. Scott Pilgrim film oh, yeah. and the return of the role in the anime series. Yeah, which was a real delight. Yeah, uh, uh, it was a great joy to play that. I like playing um, really big, broad, silly, hideous <laughs> <laughs> because it's just a lot of fun to be weird and silly and make people laugh and then have and then have the heart. Like I, I love the full how Todd comes so full circle. Kind of you don't learn a lot about it in the movie necessarily. But then we see this journey he has about finding, you know, true love and this connection to a human being that's real, no matter who it is. And I think it's beautiful. And I love all of the themes that run throughout um, uh, throughout the the series. And I love that our creators were brave enough to do that. And I love that we're in a space in the world where we can make that. And some people might not like it, but they don't have to watch it. And everybody else will be like, oh, look, I'm hurt. Look. We can all get along. Like, why are we, why are we doing half of the things that we're doing, or saying, or believing? Um, you know, we're all, we're all here. To just, we just want to watch movies and eat buttered popcorn, drink <laughs> our soda of choice, and hang with our friends. And to know that, so, and, so to know that chicken, that. And, and to know that chicken is not vegan. Yeah, and work a good job that pays more than seven dollars at minimum wage. I agree. So, um, I know the story about another audience to know. Nine dollars? Uh, is it nine dollars now? Minimum wage? It was five fifteen when I worked at the Dalton Bookstore in nineteen eighty. Seven twenty-five. Seven twenty-five. So many times it was four. It was, it was five. Five. No, four. Minutes. Anyway, it hasn't gone up. Just for <laughs> you were a beat doll. I was a long books guy. Oh, yeah. I guess we should fight. <laughs> I mean, beat doll is worse than the alphabet. You're right. So, okay. so uh, how, did, uh, how did Legends of Tomorrow uh, come about? Legends of Tomorrow came about because uh, of. <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> Maybe because of Chuck a little bit. Yeah. I feel like they were playing that. That angle of, the sh- of using Dan the Shaw against viewers and teasing them, making them think that they were going to get rid of the hate me again. Um, but I made double sure that Ray wasn't going to actually be the bad guy or the third wheel for long and not everybody on the internet hating me for breaking up Felicity and, and all of it. Uh, uh, I mean, or not. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I had a meeting about that, and uh, that was one of the big things I asked them. I didn't want, I didn't want to be do the Dan Shaw thing again, but they sure it was just for this little bit to you know make him mysterious and all this, and and, uh, and then I had to be assured that it was going to be full on comedy, like it wasn't going to just be funny for a little bit. Like, yeah. They wanted it throughout the season, and they said yes, and then I saw what I heard what they were playing for the for the for the suit, um, and I was excited about the idea that it was going to be. Mechanical, technical, yeah. and we took this aspect um, to to the house, and I was like, I went, I went, win. So, um, yeah. and then, and, and again, your Ray Palmer is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, that, that huge extended cast, and that was just a you know, and, I, and Guga and the, I've talked with him. It was just like, yeah, we just didn't know. We thought we were going to pull plug at the same time, so we just. Threw in anything and everything that, that we could while we could. So that was the thing. And then, of course, and then around when when did the overture of um, we're, we're doing a, a storyline based on a crisis in the universe. Yeah. And <laughs> we were wondering. Yeah. And how did that come about? Well, uh, yeah, it's, it's 
bit kind of bittersweet because um, it also appeared first time first uh, found out that we were no longer going to be a part of Legends um, uh, about a week or so before the Superman thing came. So that was pretty devastating for Courtney and I. We both loved our characters and we've been happy to play them for today. <laughs> um, and uh, so then about a week or so later, I got a call at the booth from Mark who uh, asking uh, if I was interested in would think about wearing a different suit, different color suit that I could also wear. Although technically, it's exactly like that. And I, so that was, uh, was very, I'm very grateful for that. Um, and it still means a great deal to me to, to have been asked, to have been get, gotten the okay from Warner Brothers and DC to participate again for validation to me that Superman, because Superman Returns um, had baggage, undo, some do, and then, but the money stuff and all that undo, because um, it's not fair to fans either, because um, I think everybody should be able to be in the sunlight enjoying Superman Returns, <laughs> yeah, because it is a good movie, and uh, many of you out there, so everybody can, we can release our shame for, or our, <laughs> our worry about saying something like Superman returns out to defend it. We just own it. I own it now. I have to go through my own journey for that. So, we, but that was a great help in it, like, and a great part. And then just the audience response through social media and, and all the other venues that you know I can gauge it by at that moment. I was very grateful to to know that I, I, I guess I a little bit stayed the test of time. Or what's the phrase? I, it lasted. Stand stood the, stood the test of time. I have trouble with. So, so that was really uh, important to me, so I think everybody can that too. No, and, and everybody was so excited because we were, we were all rooting for you. Okay, we are. And, and, it, and just as it was important for you, and, this, and, I, and I know you, you went through a journey uh, with this way too, but uh, for us as fans in general, we were so happy that you found happiness within yeah. that. And uh, yeah, first first time I saw it at the very very end. First time I saw it yeah, at the very end, you as Superman doing the flyover <laughs> and everything else. It's like I tear up. <laughs> I did that awesome because we were always on Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, life. That's how life is. Life is life is full of ups and downs. They don't go away. Uh, I mean, in my experience, they haven't. Um, but it, it's all about how. How how, conf how how confident I am that I can overcome or at least come back to the place that I was, and, and each time I do, I come back with more knowledge and more reverence for for what I lost. You know, I mean, I I value the legends of tomorrow. I don't know how I could have valued it more, leading up to what happened. And same to be said with Courtney, but but I, but I guess I do now post that. So as, uh, 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 as upset as I might have been at some of those times, I care about it and the fans so much that um, that I wanted it to be, and still want it to be, the wonderful show that it is and has been for everyone. It really was. And uh, one thing that uh, we haven't even started about, uh, it, was a, it was a small gig, but you are the only actor in history to have played Adam Superman, but the important thing is you played Superman and you have played Captain Marvel, aka Shazam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody knows the history of those characters. Mm -hmm. and that's something that probably you think, wow, that's something that's kind of impossible to happen, but you did it. <laughs> and you had that milestone. Yeah, that's not happening. I've never actually played the game or seen how it, the, what it looks like. But, but it's, no, no, it's, like, it's, it's, it's a Lego game. It's their fun, yeah. whether they're good or solid. Yeah. And, uh, and it's funny that it's. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, absolutely. Chuck. What's, uh, what's been the craziest day you've ever had on any set? Okay. Okay. Yeah, all those Johnny shows, all those effect shows. <laughs> I don't know some duties. I mean, so many like possibilities of how to answer that question, I guess. 
But, um, okay. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I guess that's it. Well, I mean, disclaimer, of course, the first day being in the suit, Superman, is really probably Pete, but it's further away. I don't remember that. <laughs> um, and then recurring, coming back as Superman was a pretty epic day. First time being on set and seeing everyone's response. But one of the wildest days I had, because it, it had nothing to do with me, was filming, I think, season four of the Tomorrow, where John Noble is a guest star. Mm-hmm. It's when we see the chicken, the rubber chicken. And, uh, where he, because they said something about eating chicken, like how many chickens he ate during filming the scene in Lord of the Rings. And uh, speaking of Lord of the Rings, so that was cool for me. <laughs> um, and, and he brought an actual rubber chicken. <laughs> and was using it in the scene, and we were just like improv the whole thing. Like I never, we had the whole script, and I, and it wasn't that big of a thing, but I loved it because I loved improv. So I just like, fed off him, or you know, I just responded to what he was doing. And it was a blast. It was a really funny scene too, um, but it was wild. Well, I was not expecting how game, how game John came to play. He came to play. <laughs> I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Um, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for your talents. I want to thank you for your professionalism. I want to thank you for the performances you brought to all your roles. And you've been a friend to fandom, and I appreciate that so very much. And uh, it's always a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Steven. What you got, Steven? So you had a couple episode arc in The Rookie where you played a less than stellar cop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you played it very well, so I was always curious. How did you get into that headspace such that you could play it as nuanced as you did? Thanks, yeah. Um, I was grateful to have that opportunity. Nathan Billion reached out to me and said, hey, would you be interested in this? I got a phone call Lexi, the showrunner show creator, had a nice conversation about it. Just to make sure that what I felt like they were doing was what they wanted to do, so I could fulfill that and, and not step on toes, but reliably, authentically um, portray this person who exists, a person like this who exists, unfortunately. Um, and for me, I'm, like, I'm, I'm the eternal optimist. I'm the good, I, the, the good guys. I think it's hard for me to get into and allow myself to be and sit in that headspace. And um, but it was important for me as a human being to go there to be in another person's shoes. Like how could how how to me? I'm like, why would I? Have that? That's dumb. <laughs> but. People, there are people like that. So if there are people like that, how did they? How did that happen? It wasn't a fluke. It didn't just like you weren't wasn't born that way. I mean, for that, for that's a whole manifestation of all kinds of social, social influence, man, familial influence, friend influence. Like we are not, we are complex. We are complex. <laughs> so um, I have to dive into some of that, and I guess I found a nugget of enough truth that I could pull and bring into my own experience that you know hopefully made them authentic. Thank you for your very detailed answer. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Good question. Hi. <laughs> My name is Mark. Hi, Mark. Hey, Mark. I'd like to know. So, uh, Brandon, when uh, Ray lost the Adam suit and Nick gave him some spoke gun, did you think that he was trying too hard to live up to the legacy of Captain Cold? Was he trying too hard to live up? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And also just like trying to be cool. Because. Uh, Ray thought he was cool and he was back and uh, had his own company and everybody. Yeah. Sure, you're the cool guy because you're the boss. But then when he's with actual people who are more cool, like he waved <laughs> in their own way and <laughs> he was cool. Uh, he was a weird guy, uh, like me. So, uh, yeah, he was trying to be, be macho and 
and also live up to you know, and honor his, his dear friend. Great, great question. Thank you. Hey, what's your name? My name's Steele. What you got? Hey, Steele. So, Steel. you've had a lot of different roles over the years. What was the most unique or interesting way you ended up with the role? <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess I guess Dylan Dog actually is pretty phenomenal that it landed to me because I didn't say the other part about this is I knew it I knew who Dylan Dog was. My my roommate, my friend roommate in Los Angeles, Garrett Stroman, uh, who is a, a fellow actor, was an actor now is on like tutoring and language business. Anyway, Stroman tutoring. Uh, <laughs> anyway, he um, he he lived in Italy for seven years. Uh, with his family, so he was spoke fluent Italian uh, because he was in Rome, and so he brought with him the Dylan Dog books. So I, had, I couldn't read them, but he would tell me about them and how big it was, more more uh, uh, popular than Superman. So when I told him about Dylan Dog, he's like, "Dude, that's amazing! That is that's like cooler to me than Superman." <laughs> so it's odd that that of all the things that came to me. <laughs> Great question. Hello again. What's your name? Chris? What you got, Chris? Chris. Uh, what was it like uh, working on a project like Legends of Tomorrow alongside your wife, Courtney? Because I know initially she had the privilege of treating your character like total crap with the yeah. and then eventually it like blossomed into something uh, beautiful. What was that like getting to work on, you two working on together, something like that? It's awesome. Uh, we love working together. Uh, and I liked this um, almost more than, than the other times because she got to shine through her comedy. Um, because she's very funny, and you know, we we made an intention. Obviously, the characters when the writers put us together, we were opposites, but we, we kept keeping that opposites for as long as we could to to build the fun and the, and the humor and, and, and the tension. You know, so it was probably the, my favorite character that I got to uh, to work with. My question, thank you. Hi, what's your name? Um, my name is Sam. Um, what was your favorite thing about like being Scott Pilgrim? Uh, my favorite thing about uh, about being in that movie, um, I mean, well, working with Edgar Wright, the director, was the first thing. It was amazing. Um, but I love, I just love how out of the box Brian Lee O'Malley. Uh, is in his thinking and how he's told this story. And he didn't know where it was going at first necessarily, but for the book series to launch to the, to the film and highlight music and all that, uh, in with the art, in with the, the story and the friendships, and then to go transition to the uh, Netflix animated, uh, anime series, where they're ramping that up even more, like doubling down on like, you know, like, Get with it, people. Like this is the new world. Um, people can be who they want to be and love who they want to love. That's me, man. I love it. What's your favorite part? Um, honestly, don't know. Just anybody has Michael Sarah. Do you think that's Michael Sarah? Yeah. Great question. Thank you very much. Oh. Hey, what's your name? My name's Alex. Alex. Uh, when you came back as Superman Crisis on Infinite Nerves, uh, did you have a different workout routine compared to Superman Returns? Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. I was. I, Superman Returns was in uh, <laughs> Sydney, Australia, and I was in the uh, the Sydney of the north of North America, Vancouver, Canada. <laughs> 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 can't do Ontario. Do Ontario. Um, <laughs> Um, so I had a different trainer, uh, Jade, who was awesome, and uh, so we did things differently. It was easier, honestly. It was so much easier because I had built uh, muscle memory um, and was in uh, okay shape uh, before going into crisis. And uh, also, I just learned so much more about nutrition, so I was working really hard before. And I so hard to eat so many 
egg whites and so on, <laughs> brown rice and the broccoli. Well, the broccoli still is good, but not the, not the chicken with no fat and all that stuff. So I enjoy it much more because I got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Fun question. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jordan. Jordan, Jordan what you got? Uh, Mr. Ralph, you have provided voice for several video games for being based on either a comic or a movie. What what was your experience providing the voice for a brand new character in the Call of Duty series, the David Walker, which I enjoyed? Hey, yeah, a Hesh was really cool, and that that was from a friend. This was from a friend, uh, uh, Brandon uh, Brandon Cox, who's an amazing cinematographer that worked on with the film with Courtney. Uh, called Missing William, and um, uh, he was friends with Keith Aaron, who was a renowned, amazing uh, voice director for video games, and also has comics himself, and, and like he's into the, all the video game world very big. And um, and Keith and I had coffee because uh, Brandon thought it would be, we should meet, and we did. And then he's like, "You should do this move, this this game." I was like, "Okay," and then they. You know, the game company, he talked to the game company, Activision, into making it happen. I was like, okay, sweet. I think it all ended up this way. <laughs> this <is> friendly. <laughs> friendly. It's um, but it was a lot of work. It was hard. I had to go, they, they found me a voice coach, which was great, and I learned how to get from a deeper register, actually, which is better. And uh, because he had so many shouting commands, so they had, I don't remember if it was a color scale or a number scale about how many lines were going to be in, in the red. We had five minutes of lines in the red, uh, 10 in the orange, and 20 in the green. So, you know, it's less harsh on the voice than a harsher um, for all the shot. But it was a lot of fun. That was my first big game, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last question for you. Hi, what's your name? Hi there, I'm Brittany. Hi, Brittany. Um, I guess I was curious if, from any of your movie sets, if you have a favorite mm. prop or item that you've been able to take home or otherwise acquire. Well, I, I, I'll let me rephrase it. I would rephrase it this. Have you found yourself in possession of anything from the, the set? <laughs> if so, is there a favorite or two? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. No, I, I don't think there's, I don't, there's, there's really anything that I shouldn't have. <laughs> um, Nick Zano had this gag where anybody was coming to visit, he'd say, uh, just take something. Yeah, no, 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 okay, just take something. <laughs> Thank you. There's little trinkets, all the little, little stuff, and like the history, and you know, his science and part of the ship, and all this stuff, right? It was always fun. Um, I can't remember if I actually did take something when he told me to, but he said it was okay, so. Um, I have, uh, I have uh, Clark Kent, a business card. That I, I think I have one from the movie, but I'm not sure what that is. But I got one. I made sure to grab a couple during crisis because they made them. It's so cool. Um, and I have. Does it say editor? I think editor yeah, chief. Editor yeah. 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 Um, and uh, then one of my favorite things that I have is from Dylan Dog. Mm -hmm. Dylan Dog. In the office, there are these yellow. I don't even know if you've seen them in the movie. I think you do. Yellow horses that are book, book uh, uh, ceramic horses that are bookends, and one of them is chipped, but uh, but I like those. So I was allowed to keep those. And uh, and I have a couple of paintings from uh, the film that's coming out for later this year. Which I don't know. Well, well, it's like it. If it belongs, you're like thirteen or older. <laughs> is, there, uh, is there anything on your docket, any project, any projects you're allowed to share with us? Scott Pilgrim. Uh, takes off, uh, and then it gets on the internet. I can say it. So you would call it anyway. Ick. That's what I'll say. We'll look forward to that. Stay tuned for the rest. Thank you, everybody.